Welcome to lesson four, the misconceptions of SEO. Like I said at the end of lesson three, we're going to put on our myth busting hat. and We are going to bust myths about SEO. You're going to hear these things all the time, either from clients, you're going to see it online, in forums, on Reddit, whatever. And now you're going to have a little bit better knowledge of some of these little maybe shadier aspects or some of the myths that just float around about SEO. So hopefully you can speak a little bit better on these topics. So let's get started by talking about some of the myths that you're going to hear. The first one is about instant results. Now I know what you may be thinking, Sam, at the end of the last module, you told us about how you got instant results for your clients. Well, yeah, I did that for a reason. Sometimes we can get instant results for our clients, but again, for that health coach example that I just gave you, there was literally no competition. There's like 10 to 20 searches for that keyword a month. That's not very competitive. That's how we were able to get her to the first page overnight. Typically speaking, when it comes to SEO, especially when it's a normal amount of competitiveness, it's going to take time. Usually you'll get a little bit of results in the first month, maybe just a quick little bump, a little jump to show them like, hey, it's working, we're doing something. Then we'll see more results around the three month mark, more results around the six month mark, and more results around the one year mark. And this is totally gonna to be dependent on how much work you're putting in and how competitive the keyword is. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. In lesson nine, we're gonna talk about keyword research. And in that lesson, we're gonna talk about the rankability formula, which will give you a good idea of how competitive a keyword is. So once you know how competitive a keyword is, you can give a better idea of what kind of results you're gonna see. But typically speaking, SEO does not happen overnight. It does take time. And the other thing that really gets thrown out there a lot is guaranteed ranking. I can't tell you how many emails or spammy ads I've seen that say, guarantee will get you to rank number one. How are people pulling this scam off? Well, they're doing one of either two things. Either A, they're lying to you because who cares? It's SEO and everybody's a scam. No, we're gonna stop that myth. So they might just be lying. The other thing they can do is something that's totally shady. So remember our first example of the non-competitive keyword. Well, what if I pick something that was even less competitive? That had 10 to 20 monthly searches, but what if it had zero monthly searches? What if nobody ever searched that keyword? But how would the client know most clients don't know how to do keyword research. Most clients wouldn't think to double check that this keyword actually doesn't have any competition, doesn't have anybody paying for paid ads behind it. It's not a commercially relevant keyword, but I can get them to rank first for it, right? I'm not halfway decent SEO. You're a scammer. And that is actually a tactic that agencies use. They try to get you to rank for these non-competitive keywords. They say, hey, look, we got you to rank number one. Just like the tactic of, hey, look, we got all this traffic from blogs. We'll talk more about that later. When it comes to local SEO, the last thing you wanna do is do guaranteed rankings. Here's what I literally say to all of my prospects. I don't work for Google. I have no idea what the algorithm says. I spend a lot of time listening to what other people think are the most important ranking factors. I follow SEO best practices. And while I can't promise that you'll rank number one, I can promise that I will work my ass off for you. And we usually have a light chuckle and we shake hands and they start working with me. Just kidding, that doesn't happen every time. But it's happened a lot and people appreciate the honesty. So don't lie about getting guaranteed rankings. Just tell them that you have no control over it and you're gonna do the best you can and hopefully you will. Now one thing that is definitely a misconception is the more keywords, the better. And I don't mean trying to rank for more keywords. That's a great strategy and we'll talk about how to do that in future lessons but I'm talking about stuffing keywords all over the page. In fact, if we look right here, we see that the preferred keyword density is somewhere in the one to 2% range. I think that's a little low. Keyword density is how many times you say the keyword throughout a page. Now a good service page probably has about 500 words. So that means we're looking at five to 10 of the words being your keyword. It doesn't really work like that. Like if I'm trying to say, general contractor bend organ on the page, you're gonna end up saying it a handful of times. My goal is to keep it it's probably less than 10%. It's probably a more realistic number, somewhere in that like two to 10% range. As low as we can, but we're still putting it in the right places. 
But if we write some copy like this, where we say, when you need a general contractor in Bend, Oregon, you may ask your friends, do you know any general contractors in Bend, Oregon? And then they'll say, you know what? The best general contractor in Bend, Oregon is General Contracting Bend, Oregon Company. It's our favorite general contractors in Bend, Oregon. So if you're looking for a general, do you get the point? Don't do that. Nobody talks like that. Just speak like a human. And in a couple important places, which we'll talk about in lesson 11, we're going to include the keyword specifically. We're going to find some ways to use words around it. And we'll talk about what those are in lesson nine where we talk more about keywords and our pages are actually going to be pretty dang good so don't just stuff keywords that will get you penalized and will not help you rank now it's important to realize why the search engine even exists now you're probably thinking where we talked about google's mission statement to provide this useful content for the world well let's dispel that myth right now google makes 175 billion dollars a year on ads in search. The search engine isn't there to provide useful content. It's to make Google money. But how do they do it? They generally provide useful content. And every once in a while, they're banking on you clicking on an ad, and that will make them billions of dollars. That's how the search engine works. Now, again, remember, if the search engine is good, and I think we can all agree, generally speaking, that Google is usually good, then we'll probably come back to it. That doesn't mean that sometimes when we search for something, we'll hit all of the top three results and they're all bad. That also happens. The reason why that happens is because content is not really king. It's important, but it's not everything. Again, especially for local SEO, it comes down to relevancy and authority. Relevancy is what SEO bucket we show up in and authority is who is pointing to us. Now, we will talk a lot about relevancy and authority in module three, so I won't beat a dead horse there, but please don't just think that Google is trying to provide this useful content. They're actually trying to make money off of these ads. And by, as a byproduct, they're going to give us generally useful content, which is great, but it's not all about content. There are other reasons why we rank. And so that's why it's really important to remember that it's not just about keywords. It's not just about links. It's about a lot of things. Another SEO myth that you might hear is that SEO is a one-time task. This usually comes in when somebody has worked with a web designer that has offered a service that is sometimes called an SEO boost. That's where they go through and fill out the SEO titles, the meta descriptions, put some good hierarchical content. And honestly, if they guess right, then they probably did an okay job. And the page might honestly be ranking a little bit. But unless they really took time to do keyword research and they guessed correctly, like 100% correctly, chances are there's probably still some love that needs to be done. But they may have pitched the service as, this is me doing SEO, so you're good to go. We'll talk more about SEO boost services in lesson seven when we talk about offering local SEO. Now, if you're presented with somebody in this situation, they're probably going to say, oh, my web designer did my SEO. And if you ask them, what does that mean? They might give you some answer like, uh, I don't know, I think it was something about a plugin. This is where we can explain to them like, okay, that's awesome. That means that you at least have a foundation going. But did you know that SEO is an activity that needs to happen over time? Google rewards activity over time. I don't think I've said that yet until this lesson, but that's one of my favorite lines that I like to say to clients, to peers, to everybody, because Google does reward activity over time. And so when they made that page, we don't know how much keyword research they did when they put the keyword in. Maybe they did a lot and they guessed right. Maybe they didn't do any and they guessed wrong. It doesn't matter. There's a chance that we could increase the relevancy by working on the content. And then we have to work on authority. There's no way they were able to build any backlinks while they were doing an SEO boost package. So it's not a one-time activity. It's something you have to work on over time. And we haven't even talked about the Google business profile, which definitely needs love over time. And we gotta make sure we're getting reviews and there's just all of these other things. And so we don't want to come at this from the perspective of speaking down to people. I didn't know any of this stuff and so I started to work in SEO. Don't use it as an opportunity to speak down to the business owner. Use it as a chance to educate. Here are the three things that are important for local SEO. Google business profile, website, backlinks, and you can keep going, or if it feels like the conversation is not going anywhere, 
don't worry about it. Just move on and live your life. All right, now it's time to go to the now, when it comes to SEO, there's this spectrum out there. There's white hat SEO, and there's black hat SEO, and there's gray hat SEO, which is somewhere in the middle. If you go to the very vanilla articles and free courses out there, they're going to say, make sure you follow only white hat SEO tactics. But I'm going to tell you that if you really really do white hat SEO, all you're doing is putting a website out there and then you're walking away. Spoiler alert, that's not what anybody does. Even if you just use an SEO plugin in WordPress to enter in an SEO title and you tie it to a keyword, you're kind of moving your way towards gray hat because you're technically manipulating the search engines, aren't you? Where do SEO best practices fall? It's somewhere in the gray range. At the end of the day, the big thing we want to watch out for is Google's terms of service. We don't really want to violate them. We're going to look at Google's terms and conditions. Most of the stuff on this page is black hat, but I'm going to stop at the one gray hat thing that I want you to see because we really need to talk about this for a second. So if we scroll down this page a little bit past the real black hat stuff, we get to link spam and it says right here, buying or selling backlinks for ranking purposes. This includes exchanging money for links. And so if you read that literally, that means that you cannot give anybody a single dollar for a backlink ever. So let's imagine that you are going to write a guest blog post, which is what a lot of the talking heads on YouTube will recommend you do to get backlinks. If that site has authority and they're about to share their authority with you, because that's how backlinks work, their Google juice flows onto your site. They're going to share that authority with you. Do you think they're gonna do it for free? Maybe, just maybe they'll do that. But at the end of the day, we live in a capitalist society and backlinks from high authority websites have value baby. And that means you're probably paying to go on to that guest post. So I'm just letting you know that a lot of the advice that people tell you is white hat SEO actually might violate the terms and conditions of Google's algorithms. Now, what if I pay money to a citation service to get me backlinks in directories, i.e. citations? Is that technically exchanging money for links? Kind of seems like it, but tools like Bright Local exist. So is that against Google's terms and conditions? And what about when I track down some directory that's a high quality directory that, you know, list wedding florist and they charge me $25 a month to have a profile, aren't I technically paying for the backlink to that site? Well, if you go a little bit farther down, you'll notice that they say low quality directory links are against the rules. And so technically speaking, if the site you're getting lists on is a high quality directory, then it's okay. So I guess that includes citations. I guess that includes buying backlinks on high quality directories, which probably has a low threshold because I can tell you from competitor research, a lot of people are doing it. But after hearing all that, you might be wondering, so Sam, should I buy backlinks to help with my local SEO? And my answer is, but here's what you should not do. Don't go on Fiverr and don't go on Upwork and buy backlinks because those aren't high quality backlinks. In fact, later on in lesson 12, we're going to talk about the backlinks that we would consider buying, you know, if we were hypothetically okay with violating these terms and conditions, allegedly. Let's move on past that. So that's gray hat SEO because let's be real, everybody that's ever done SEO has bought backlinks, but moving on. Let's talk about the things you definitely should not do. Now, cloaking and doorways are kind of similar. And the reason why this is bad is what you're doing is you're serving one thing up to the algorithm. So they rank you in a certain place. But as soon as the user gets to the page, you use code to redirect them to a different page. That's not cool, first of all. Second of all, it's really against the rules. So if you get caught, good job spamming us for a second. The second you get caught, you're going to get penalized. So just don't do that. This also says that you shouldn't use expired domains to steal their old authority. 
Now, I don't know how much I believe this one, but it does seem like it's the examples that have been presented that I've heard about these are when somebody's taken a good high quality old domain and then they used it for like a casino site online. So I don't know about this one. I don't think you need to worry about this. If you find an expired domain that's available that has some authority, then there's a chance that you can piggyback off that authority and start ranking faster. That's like kind of an old school tactic that probably still works to this day. But if you take what used to be a reputable site and they let the domain expire and you get it in auction and then you build the spammy site on top of it, of course you're gonna get in trouble. The next thing is something called hidden text and links. And so that's like putting white text on a white background or using like font size zero or using CSS to position text off screen. All of this stuff, you cannot outsmart the algorithm. Don't do any of this stuff. It's just silly. Same thing with keyword stuffing. We already talked about this. Like, <laughs> look at this example right here. Unlimited app store credit. There are so many sites that claim to offer app store credit for $0, but they're all fake and always mess up with users looking for unlimited app store credits. You can get limitless credits for app store right here on this website. So stupid. All right, this is where they talk about buying backlinks. Some of this stuff is actually not good to do. Like, okay, one thing you don't wanna do is if you get any sort of backlinks, you don't want a ton of them to have your keyword in it uh, in the anchor text. And so we'll talk about that in the backlinks lesson. It also says to not use machine generated traffic. And so that's, I don't know, I've heard people using like bots to get there, but I uh, just don't do that. Um, it says don't have malware on there, which, could be a byproduct of a hack. If your site gets hacked and you have malware on it, then that can actually get you down rank. So make sure you keep your WordPress site updated. Scaled content abuse. This is in direct response to the March 2024 algorithm update. People were using ChatGPT to build out these million page websites and they were getting them to rank. And so Google has now come out very staunchly opposed to this. And we should mention that not only did these sites get penalized, usually what that means is you go from like third to 93rd, these sites went from first to off of the search engine result page. They were de-indexed. This is unprecedented. That's never happened before. So just know Google has played their hand that they will not mess around with this fake content. And so just be careful. So let's put a bow on this white hat to black hat strategy. Here's the thing. If it would naturally occur, then do it. That's okay. But if it seems scammy and like a shortcut, probably don't do it. And I know what you're thinking is getting listed in a semi high quality directory or getting citations very natural? Probably not. But if you're doing something that everybody else is doing, then you're probably okay. But if you're trying this new sneaky trend that's showing up on YouTube all of a sudden, then probably think twice about doing it. Over this last year, there was a lot of stuff about programmatic SEO and parasite SEO. And it was all the way because people were getting a lot of ranking very quickly, but they were taking shortcuts. And guess what happened? An algorithm came out and knocked them off. And did anybody else have to worry? No, actually in local SEO land, pretty much nothing happened. There might've been some deviations from your normal spot for a couple of weeks while they were releasing the update. But at the end of it, we all pretty much were in the same place. There was nothing to worry about. So just follow SEO best practices, stick to white hat as much as possible, stick to the gray hat stuff, try to follow the terms and conditions. And if you buy backlinks, just don't tell anybody. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the difference between SEO and the other services in digital marketing. Digital marketing is a big web. There are so many things you can offer as part of digital marketing. Email marketing, social media management, pay-per-click ads, web design, website maintenance. You could just do Google business profiles. You could just do SEO. You know, you could do national SEO. You could do content marketing. You could do video editing. There are so many things you can do. Now. Right now, what I really want to delineate is that when you're doing local SEO, you're also probably going to be doing some content writing, but you don't necessarily have to. You can separate these things. You can have a power partner that's a copywriter. You can have a power partner that's a web designer. You can have a team member or a subcontractor that you work with. You don't actually have to do these pieces. I'm going to speak intimately about the content because I believe as the SEO strategist, the SEO specialist, you should be creating at least the content framework. Even if you don't build the content, you should be using your brain to build the strategy behind the content. But just know that content marketing is different than SEO. And so since you're going to be in charge of content, you have to think about quality over quantity. 
There are a lot of local SEO videos that are very popular on YouTube that talk about as quickly as possible, scale out each one of your service pages for each one of your locations and then multiply that by infinity. And they're like really breaking it down. Like, you know, let's say you are an electrician and you do electrical services, you do EV charging stations and you do solar panel installations. Technically, you do a bunch of little things in there. So these videos will say, well, build out pages for all of that and use ChatGPT to help you do that. Well, this is kind of like the scaled content abuse thing. If you build out this really thin website with all of these pages, especially quickly, Google's going to be skeptical. Again, if we want to stay to that mantra of don't do anything if it seems unnatural or scammy, really, really focus on building out your page organically over time. A real page would probably start small with just a few pages, then build out some service pages, then build out some location pages, maybe even write a blog or two, then go back to building out some more location pages. And that might happen over a six to 18 month span. It's definitely not gonna happen in a month. So you wanna be very careful when you're doing this. Think about quality over quantity. Well, the algorithm may only be able to use our content to determine which SEO bucket we can go in. We can guess that over time, the algorithm will get better at looking at the content there's probably a reason why Google keeps pushing this agenda about content, about EEAT, and even though they're not ranking factors today, that doesn't mean that as AI becomes less resource intensive, that it might not be a ranking factor in the near future. All right, I think that's enough myth busting for this lesson. Hopefully that gives you some more knowledge, probably just made you more confused about what exactly is gray hat SEO, but I really hope that some of these lessons were helpful and give you a little bit better idea so you can speak more clearly about SEO the next time people ask you questions. And I'm really excited for you to get done with module one and to get started with module two, which is all about implementing local SEO.